All right, well, let's take you to the next step. Now, we, when we last left you, we had designed this user interface, and we saw we run it, we ran it on the iOS simulator. Now, I want to take it a, a little bit further, make it a little bit more interesting, a little more interactive. Uh, the first thing I want to do is get my local server installed here. So I have the live reload server, which is very useful for interacting with Cordova Sim as an example. But I want to actually put in an enterprise application platform. So I'm going to say new server here. And I'm going to come down here and go to Red Hat JBoss Middleware. And I'm going to pick the 6.1. So we need a 6.3 um, uh, JBoss Enterprise Application Platform. I'm going to say 6.1 plus and it's going to be a local and I'm going to use the file system and I'm going to create a new runtime here. This is an update to uh, previous JBoss Developer Studios so the way you pick a runtime and the way you pick a local server is a little bit different now so if you have to do a new runtime meaning a new directory a new installation of your EAP just bear that one in mind. All I've done is unzip the EAP into a local directory here so let's say next and I'm going to go ahead and say uh, 6.3 I'm going to call this the mobile runtime since that's what it's going to be for me I'm going to pick a home directory and so let's go down here to mobile and EAP 6.3 and hit open. Okay, so that's my 6.3. I'm currently running in um, everything in Java 8 right now, so I'm going to go ahead and pick Java 8 and I'm going to hit next and I'm going to hit finish. So if I've done that all correctly, I should be able to come in here and well, actually, if you notice, my name of my server is not quite what I want it to be. So I'm going to make that three. I'm going to call this EAP 6.3 uh, mobile just to make it a little bit cleaner for myself. All right, uh, you just double click on the server in the service tab and you can make that change. Hit save. And let's see here, I'm going to say start. Hopefully I don't have another server already started on this system. We'll find out pretty quickly. Uh, looks like it came right on up there. Uh, let me go to my browser just to check it out. All right, so we do have a clean running EAP right now. Uh, so let's get back here and do some interesting things. So I'm going to come to JBoss Central, and I'm going to build uh, the HTML5 project from the archetype just to kind of show you traditional web-based mobile web HTML5 development. But more importantly, it has a REST endpoint that I want to use in there. So I'm going to click on that, uh, get the right runtime, hit next and I'm gonna basically say uh, let's not go with a crazy project name um, let's just go with something smaller than that how about that mobile mobile rest and hit finish the project name you know becomes part of the URL because that's part of the war file name so in this case I want to make it a little bit smaller and so there's my little project um, open that guy up there and you notice there's some Jax RS web services in here uh, and so that's what we're going to be messing around with. So just care, bear that one in mind. All right, so we're going to play with that little members guy right there. So let me hit finish here. Don't care about the readme. Right click, run as on local server. So run on server. Pick my server, and hit finish. And that guy's going to get deployed there. There it goes deployed out there and you can see that's what it looks like uh, it's a nice little mobile web application I can go to list members and I can go to here for JSON uh, and so that's what the JSON representation looks like this is important to me because this is how I'm, I'm going to interact with that guy in a little, in a little bit and if I want to add a new member here um, I'll just add myself for at Red Hat and phone number make up a fictitious phone number don't call me hit register and if I did that correctly you can see there's the two records all right so that's good enough for now. Um, so now we have a REST endpoint out there. And most importantly, let me go back actually over here to JSON. You know, let's just grab this URL because we're going to need that later. Uh, OK. Let's grab that URL because I'm going to need that later. Let's hit the right keys on the keyboard this time. There we go. Uh, and and I, I often will come back to the browser just to see what it looks like, you know, from the browser standpoint. All right, so that's my endpoint. Now let's go wire it into our little mobile application we've been building over here. So come back to index HTML. You remember earlier we had a single page. If we bring up our Cordova sim, we had a single page which was like a new contact form. What I want to do is add a, a menu system and then a new page that allows me to list all existing contact, uh, contacts in the database. So let's add the menu and that's called a panel in jQuery mobile land. That's kind of like a Facebook style slider menu. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a uh, generate the ID. It'll come out as panel one. 
and I'm going to say that the first page is new contact and that's going to be pound page one or hashtag page one I'm going to say the next one is enterprise contacts alright pound page two and we're going to do device contacts a little bit later alright so we'll come back to that in a second um, alright so we're, let's just do those three right there they look good hit finish alright and if you notice nothing happened really over here because we have to make that menu that panel visible so it's a slide off kind of menu so what we need to do is add a little button here in the header okay and the header I'm gonna add a button and we're gonna call this thing the menu button it's gonna have a URL pound panel one all right that's the name of the panel see panel one right there and um, I want to give it an icon I want the bars icon see what that's what it looks like and I'm gonna say icon only I just need it to be a little small icon all by itself and then when we update all right now we have a little slider menu okay so now we have our little menu off to the side the transitions don't work particularly nicely in this version but we will work on that but you can kind of see how we navigate so now I'm ready to add my second page so I come back down here boom, boom add my second page in this case I'm going to add the enterprise contacts page enterprise contacts and uh, hit finish and then let me see I need to add the I want to add that menu button to this screen as well so I just copy and paste it that's the easiest thing to do you notice it goes right inside the header right above the h1 there uh, and that's the best place to put it and um, by default jQuery will put the first button on the left hand side of the screen and the second button on the right hand side so if I come here you can kind of see how we navigate all right pretty cool so this is the page we're working on now page con content goes here so all I had to do here is just add a list view the list view is your primary user interface widget for dealing with a mobile application I'm gonna call this one contacts I'm gonna say it's read-only I'm gonna just ignore these items down here for now because I won't need them um, they're gonna get blown away in the future but you can kind of feel get a look at what that thing will uh, feel like a little bit later right so that's what it looks like now but now we're gonna write a little bit of code so if you remember that rest endpoint what we need to do is interact with that rest endpoint and populate these list items here so I want to come to index.js pretty much all the code you write in Cordova land goes in this uh, section called device ready so if you need to declare new functions you add them up here and then anything you want to do on page load if you will when the thing first starts up uh, think of this as application start that is the device ready function where you drop your stuff so in this case I want to go out there and query the database or that rest endpoint for um, for the code that we have or sorry for the context that we have so I'm going to copy and paste this JavaScript logic just because it's a little bit easier for me notice the URL right here let's go ahead and update the correct URL since I'm using the local host one not this OpenShift hosted one um, the oh, one point I forgot to mention uh, I should have started my server with dash B uh, uh, but you can see right here it's already updated based on my change but one thing I did not do and it's good to do if you double click on that guy again you want to say listen on all interfaces for remote web connections because when you deploy this to an actual phone and your phone's on your local network uh, you want your phone to be able to see your local host environment too, your your app server so that's a critical item I should have made that point we'll hit save um, and then we'll heck let's just restart the server just to make sure that's there for a future in case I forget about in the future okay so let's go back over here now uh, you can see that though just to walk you through this um, there's the two records that we had up there in on the rest endpoint what we do first is we say we're gonna do a contacts empty that blows away the list one item two three that was in there before here, just to look at that again that's what it looks like you know um, here we'll just pop this open here so you can see what I was talking about right so that one two three we blew it away blew it away with the dot empty um, and then we basically did a each for the data set right the data that came back from that rest endpoint we basically rolled through the data set and said I want the key and the value and we did a console.log so that's why you see that happening over here on the console see that first Sutter John Smith kind of thing that's where that's coming from console.log shows up in our console right here inside the IDE and then I do an items.push it's an array so you can do a push on it and we actually have the key and the name and then um, we do an append to the contacts and then we tell it to refresh that's critical you tell it to refresh so that it updates its user interface so everything that's been added to the database um, gets added here so if we wanted to now 
come back over here to the UI portion of it. Um, Jimmy Jones, uh, Jimmy at redhat.com. Don't know who that really is. Try not to email the poor person, hit register. Come back to my mobile application over here and hit refresh. Uh, you can see Jimmy Jones and John Smith and somehow or another I lost burst. So, oh, I restarted and that was the problem. <laughs> when I restarted the server, they actually eliminated the previous record. So let's just go look at it. So there's Jimmy, John Smith. Okay, so it matches. Um, all right, but that basically will give you a working environment. Now you can see how we integrate an enterprise component you know, from the enterprise application platform directly into the mobile client. And again, all you have to do now is right click and say run as Android or run as iOS simulator and you're off and running. All right, so that's all for now. We'll show you some more in a moment.